There's not gonna be much room. There's not gonna be much room. There's not gonna be much room. Hey, what's up everyone? Danny here. In this video, we're gonna be doing an opposite of a let's unbox it together video. So it's gonna be a let's box it together. And these are all parts for a complete build that I'm gonna put together to ship to a friend. I've already benchmarked them and tested them to make sure that they work. And uh, I'll have that video linked in the description section below. But we got everything except for the case because it doesn't make sense for me to try to ship a case to him with all this in it. First of all, it's dangerous because the parts can come undone and all that. But it's also really expensive to ship a full computer case. So he's just going to buy a case and have Newegg or Amazon or whatever ship it straight to him. Since that makes more sense, it would be cheaper that way. But I wanted to do this video because if you're going to be buying or even selling used hardware, it's good to know what to look for when someone sends you something or when you send something out uh, to make sure it isn't damaged in the process. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's talk about all the best materials needed to do this. The best stuff to use is stuff that came with the components when they were brand new initially. So that includes any bubble wrap. Um, this is also a weird form of bubble wrap. It's like long tube air wraps. And um, here's some bubble bags from Amazon. I just save all these up because I know I'm going to need them one day. So I keep like a kind of small stash on hand. And here are anti-static bags. These are really useful. But let's say you don't have all of these because for whatever reason you didn't think about it and you threw them away. There are other alternatives that you can use and the most important of them is newspaper or just paper in general. But I find that newspaper is easiest because it's really large and you can do a lot with it in terms of wrapping a part up and using it as crumple material. You can get them almost anywhere whereas I think anti-static bags are a little bit more rare to find in your common store. And you can either usually get them for really cheap or for free. You can also use other things like junk mail. Like this is a uh, class schedule from the local community college that they always send out every quarter. And this has many pages and is basically like newspaper. I'm gonna get a little creative in this video and also use things like this broccoli bag as well as this jasmine rice bag. And these are both dry so water's not gonna be an issue. But uh, I want to use them because they're pretty thick. They're not just like crappy material. They're thick and durable, which means that, you know, when you crumple them up, they will take up a lot of volume and make for good cushioning. Last thing you're going to need are boxes. And depending on what you're shipping out, you may need one or more boxes. Because I'm shipping out a motherboard, I'm going to have a dedicated motherboard box. This isn't the one for this motherboard. This is actually an AMD box that I just had. And this is an Intel motherboard. But it just has to fit the same form factor. So this is a full ATX box. And I want to have a separate box within the bigger box for the motherboard specifically. I'm going to be leaving the RAM in the slots as well as the heatsink on. So this is just going to protect that all as a package and then for everything else to go in as well as this box um, this is the only box I had you can use anything it doesn't really matter but just get something that you can have cushion on all sides and will fit all the components in let me make a little bit of space real quick so that I can show what I'm doing here so the first thing I'm gonna pack up is the motherboard and ideally you want to put it in an anti-static bag but let's just say you don't have one so what you want to do is wrap it completely in newspaper. So the motherboard is now completely wrapped up. Even within the box, I would recommend putting down at least a small layer of cushion so that the back of the motherboard is not directly in contact with kind of a hard surface. So if it is moving around a bit, there is some layer of cushioning. So we're just going to put newspaper in before laying it down. And then stick the motherboard in. Now once the motherboard's in, I would also recommend stuffing a little bit of newspaper loosely uh, on all sides. And this is the final product. So it's cushioned on the back side of the motherboard with two to three layers of kind of loose uh, newspaper that can compress as well as the top side and it has the heat sink up here that's going to protect all of it. Then we have all of these kind of small strips stuck along the side so that if it does shift in any of those directions it will absorb the impact. 
So now we can close this up. And there we have it. Now we gotta figure out the orientation of how this is all gonna go in the box. If you're shipping out only one component, it's not too bad. You just put it right in the center of the box if you can. But since we're shipping out multiple things, we want it to be padded on all sides within this box. And then we want cushioning between each of the individual components. So it looks like this is gonna fit the best like this. If you look at it, there's not much room within this box to have cushioning around the motherboard box on the sides. Uh, it's already flush right here basically. So that's why we wanted to have all the extra layers of cushioning around this motherboard box on the inside so that even though we can't add additional cushioning you know, on this top side, it's already gonna be fine. So I'm gonna add something in this gap right here so that the motherboard has some form of impact absorption on this side in case it does fall in this direction. Whenever you're packing stuff, you want it to be kind of loose and and crumpled because uh, multiple layers of a crumpled material can absorb impact way better than multiple layers of a flat or densely packed material. Like let's look at this newspaper. If I crumple it up a bit and there's like five or six layers through the thickness and I punch it, you know, that sounded soft and it felt soft, it didn't hurt at all. And let's look at this. This is probably like eight layers of newspaper. Imagine it was densely packed like this or just laid in flat. When you punch it, you can hear that sound. That's a hard impact. And you know, that's not gonna protect your parts as well. So always loosely bunch things up, whether it be newspaper, like these bags or any kind of paper. Put this on the side right here to fill in the gap. And we're just gonna leave it there for now. And then we can pack it more if we have room. Next up, we'll do the hard drives. And for these, I just make sure that there is one layer of newspaper wrapped around each of them. And here we go. Again, loosely wrapped so that uh, it can compress quite a bit. And this is basically all you need to do for that. This is also a solid state drive, so I'm worried less about it uh, in terms of shock absorption. But for this one, uh, we'll see what one piece of newspaper does. So this is a spinning hard drive. So I can still kind of feel hard edges on there. I'm just gonna pack some more newspaper. You can kind of use your best judgment on this. All right, so both the hard drives are packed up now. I'm gonna put them in to the side and I will rearrange it and play Tetris in a second. Next up is the graphics card. You can follow the same advice that I use for the hard drives, but because I have this thing, uh, I'm going to first wrap it up in newspaper because this plastic material can build up a static charge. So I'm going to first protect it on all sides with newspaper, then I will put it in here. One layer of newspaper on the graphics card is enough because in this case, I'm not using it for a cushioning or dampening impact. I'm just using it to protect it from electrostatic discharge. So we will now stick this in here and it will be safe and can rub against this plastic material and we can rub it on the floor all we want and it will not be damaged. Graphics card all ready to go. Last is the power supply. And this thing is pretty beefy, so I'm gonna get one layer of newspaper around it first, and then we're gonna play some Tetris within this box to see if we can get it kind of in the center with cushion all around it, because I think, you know, this graphics card could be on the side of the box because this is plenty of cushioning, and uh, we want this thing, because it's so heavy, to be in the center because it's gonna be shifting around the most. All right, and we are good to go. So everything is wrapped up now. It's time to play Tetris. So I'm gonna move the camera and let's see how we fit everything inside the box. All right, so everything is in the box and I made sure to have anywhere from one to two inches 
uh, of cushion around the perimeter of the big outside box. And the last thing to put in are these wires, which is gonna be the power cable as well as some SATA cables from my friend. We're gonna put them right here on top. I think we are good to go. I'm just gonna do one more layer of tape on this bottom side because this thing used to hold potato chips and now it's holding a bunch of computer parts. All right, let's get it shipped out now. What's yeah. your phone number? Um, it's... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Great day. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much for waiting. All right, bye. Okay. All right, it's in UPS's hands now, and we are all done. So let's get out of here. That's gonna be it for this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I tried to make it as entertaining as possible as you can for a boxing video. So I'm gonna wrap it up, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.